it's pretty, it's like not connected with anything. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look at that. That's definitely been repainted. What's up everybody, welcome. My name is Jason with Chicago Auto Pros. Behind me is a Lucid Air. This is the first one we have in the shop. It's in here to get some work done, some paint protection film, and a ceramic coating on the car. Why we have it in here, I wanna take a look at the fit and finish of the car. We've done this with a couple EVs already. We had the Tesla in here, and recently we had the Rivian truck in here, and we just took a look at it with a detailer's eye perspective, just to see what the fit and finish looks like. We're gonna look at the paint, and we don't do this to bash anybody. We just want to give a good perspective. If you're a potential buyer of this vehicle, what you can expect. Us detailers, we're a little OCD. We look at things a little bit differently, a little more detailed eye. So we're going to walk through this car and show you everything that you may get. We'll start with the exterior, go through the front here and work our way into the interior of the car. First thing that we notice is the bumper here. It's, it's very flat. So anything that's going to impact the car on that front bumper is gonna hit pretty hard. So we're gonna be doing some paint protection film to protect this car from any rock chips or any hazards on the road. We already washed the car, so my first observation of this is we see a lot of love marks, a little swirl marks, a little bit of marring. So what that tells me is that the paint is probably a pretty soft paint. Soft paints versus hard paints. A soft paint, is a paint that scratches very easily. You wipe it with a microfiber or you barely touch it or you know, when you wash it, it just scratches very easily. There's a wide variety of different paints throughout different brands and manufacturers. A hard paint doesn't scratch very easily. So one of the first things that we notice when we actually wash in the car, it has some pigtailing right here. So what can happen is when the factory paints the car, you can have little dust nibs or a little garbage that falls into the paint. And this is pretty normal at the manufacturing process um, to actually go ahead and sand those down to get rid of any of those dust nibs. And it just looks like they did that here, but they left some, they call it pigtailing behind. So what happens when you sand something and you have, um, and you're sanding clear coat, you have contaminants. So that clear coat actually gets clogged up into that sandpaper and creates pigtails. It's, it's actually digging into the paint and you can see a whole little section right here of pigtailing and just stuff that is in the paint that we're going to have to remove uh, before we put our protection services on there. We look for this stuff too. So this is a little bit of um, compound or wax or polish or whatever it is. Sometimes when it goes to the service center or the dealership, they'll do some sort of waxing or polishing. If they see any defects, they'll try to fix them themselves. And you just got a little bit there. Uh, we'll clean that up a little bit. This piano black trim here is a very sensitive. It scratches very, very easily. Oh, what is this? A Little bit of um, glue, maybe. Maybe a bit, little bit of the seal that's coming out on that. Inside there, you can see some more polish and wax inside those cracks. This piece of trim doesn't fit all the way down. You can actually see right through it. Let's check the other side. Yeah, this side fits fine. So you can see that fits nice and flush. This is the Lucid Air Grand Touring. So one step down um, from the top model. So this is $140,000 here for this trim level package. Look at it, here's some red paint. <laughs> so take a look at this. This is the uh, the front bumper trim area with the Lucid and the lights behind it and everything. It looks like we got a couple spots here. That looks like paint. <laughs> red paint dots that probably shouldn't be there. Oh, there. There's another one. I can't imagine they'd be painting this with this on there. Like how did they get paint on there? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, this car has 200 miles on it. So there are a couple rock chips and ooh, what is this? So this here, that looks like overspray of something. Look at that. See this up here? More overspray. Typically you don't see that unless uh, something's been repainted on it. I'm a detailer. I've been doing this for 18 years. You know, we're looking at this with a little different eye than most. Most might not even look at a car this closely, but we want to just to inspect it and go over it and see what the first time build quality of this car is. So we might get a little crazy. Basically what I want to let people know that a new car isn't always new. You know, you get a new car and you expect 
expect it to be perfect and we want it to be perfect, but sometimes there are little issues that are fixable, like some of the pigtails up there. Those are perfectly fine. We can fix them, a detailer can fix them. Um, but when we buy a new car, we expect it to be new, and sometimes we don't realize that the life that it goes through before it actually gets to us. It's being built in a, uh, in a factory, wherever it's built. I know these are built in Arizona. Uh, so it has to get to Illinois somehow. So they put it on a truck. Maybe it's an open trailer uh, Maybe it got dirty. Maybe it got washed a few times. It goes to the dealership They're looking at things that maybe they try to fix it We've seen some crazy things come in here on some brand new cars that you wouldn't expect to be on a brand new car Overspray is an indication that something's been repainted. So we're gonna go look at this car We're gonna go through it inch by inch so you guys can see everything you can see this inner wheel well here it is not tucked in properly. And then I'm following this down and take a look at this. Look at this. See the seal? The seal has paint on it. Yep. Here you go. So you feel, I can feel it right on top and you can probably see it on the camera. This is what happens when you tape something off and you have an edge on it. So you can feel this edge. This has probably been repainted here. So what we can actually do is I'll go over and grab a uh, paint gauge. So we'll measure this here. 3.84 mils, that's pretty normal. Uh, new paint layers you'll see from anywhere from three and a half to five. Uh, the more paint, the better. So this is kind of on the low side. You can see, it tells us whether it's steel or aluminum. We got an aluminum panel here. This is the panel that we wanna check. Oh, there we go. So quite a bit thicker. You got almost seven mils of paint and it tells us this is a second layer of paint. Oh, that's reading thicker too. Yep, back to, look at that. Back to normal. That's definitely been repainted. I don't know if the customer knows about that or not, but uh, we're gonna let them know. It sucks, you never know what can happen, you know? Maybe it was damaged in transit and they Send it out to get repainted. Maybe the dealer told them about it. I don't know. Let's move on. I feel like a crime investigator. Something happened here. Let's figure it out. Now we looked at the window. We're not going to do window tint on this. And I don't know how you would window tint this because it's one big piece on the front here. And then you have the sun visor that goes into there and then it goes all the way up. So this is actually tinted on top and it's a little bit reflective. But if you're actually, we do a lot of front windshields here and tint them you would have some sort of line in here. I, I don't even know where to begin to start to window tint this thing. And it looks like this is a full piece of glass in here. I don't even know how the window, I'm gonna see how the windows go down. Okay, wow. So you can see it has a black area right there. So you don't have to tint it, but you do have to tint it into that black area so you don't see any light gaps. And honestly, this looks like a very difficult, oh, you can get film in there. I'm not sure if anybody has tinted one of these before, but it doesn't look fun, I'll tell you that. Tinting this back window has a nice little curve here, but you can see this back deck lid here where it, it's very, look at how thick that is. It's almost touching that back window. So as a detailer and as a window tinter, we look at these things to figure out how we're gonna make this work. And that is so tight that this probably, this this speaker lid that's back here needs to probably be removed for us to be able to window tint it. One thing that we did notice when we were washing it, I'll show you this here. So this trim piece here, our guy was drying the door jams and he came up here. Look at that. It's pretty, it's like not connected with anything. Like I can almost pull this whole thing out. Uh, and we tested it on the other doors too. So it seems to be the same thing. You know, it just comes right out. It's not very, there's nothing holding it on. So if you're washing it on your own and you happen to do that, just know that. <laughs> Careful, did they do something up here? Ooh, here's a hair. You'll see this every once in a while. So you got a hair in the paint there. Was this repainted? Let's measure it. Uh, six mils. Oh, six mils doesn't seem too much. Oh. So that's very thin up here though. Look at how thin it is. Very, very thin. And then you got thick over here, seven mils. Almost seven mils. 
nine mils, seven mils. So I would say this has been repainted. Four, is that plastic? It's a plastic trunk. So you got an aluminum quarter panel right into a plastic trunk. On to the back. It does have 200 miles on it. The customer has been driving it for a little bit. Unfortunately, he already closed the garage door on the back trunk here. You can see a couple marks. Back doors again, kind of a really weird, I've never seen this. It's like a frameless window with a frame. Like most of the time you see full frame windows, you got the frame on this side and the frame on this side, but you can actually see the edge of the window on this. And then it's got a frame on it. No glue spots, nothing over here. Actually, it looks a lot better over here. Door looks good. Trim looks good. Something must have happened on that other side. I'm not sure. Let's go inside. Let's see what we got. I love the, uh, the brown carpet with the black leather. You got all kinds of different materials in here. You got this like canvas. You got the Alcantara. You got the black leather. The brown stitching. This looks sweet. The glass is a, a really cool feeling to be in. Let's take a look closer at some of the design, some of the fitment in here. Looks really good. You got the venting system here. Nice little touches with uh, the branding. Everything looks like it's fitting real nice in here. They spent a lot more time on the inside than they did on the outside, didn't they? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Very nice. That's sweet. Let's go into the back, take a look. Just so you can see everything. Very roomy, look at that. Let's open the trunk. How much room do we have back in there? Wow, look at how wide that is. That's crazy looking. Not very you know, thick, but definitely wide. Oh, there we go. Let's take a look at this. $140,000. I am gonna call the customer and let them know that uh, it appears to be a couple repainted panels. Unfortunately, that might put the work off for us if, he's, if he wants to do something about that, unfortunately, but. It's the right thing to do. Oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why do you have lights there? Look at these lights. Inside the trunk jam. Can you see them from the outside of the car? Why would you have lights there? I don't understand. Let's jump into the driver's side now. Nice leather steering wheel. It looks like you got uh, several buttons here for uh, the radio and then a couple toggle switches to turn up the volume. I think these are required to have these here. Sun visors. Very cool. They do seem kind of in the way though. The speakers up top and the A pillar. I like it. I don't know if I like it for $140,000 though. All right, there's my video of going over the Lucid Air. I wanna thank you for watching, I appreciate it. Leave any comments down below, we'd love to hear from you and talk with you and subscribe for more content. We'll see you later.